We live now upon an island amid many perils, and our hands are more often upon the bowstring than upon the harp. Today, we narrate the life and story of Haldir, the March Warden of Lothlorien. Haldir first comes into the tale when the Fellowship of the Ring arrives to the woods of Lothlorien, during which time the Forest Realm is ruled by Galadriel and Celeborn. It is not known for how long he has been living there, or even how old he actually is. Unknown as well is to which elven kindred Haldir belongs. Based on his words and his knowledge of the world, he is probably a Nando or Wood Elf, but this is only an assumption. The meaning of Haldir's name is unclear, but it is Sindarin and could mean hidden hero. He has two brothers, Rumil and Thorofin, but of them we learn little. He and his fellow March Wardens in the northern borders of Lothlorien usually wear grey hooded cloaks, and they know how to hide so well amid the trees that they cannot be seen at all unless they move suddenly. He is one of the Galadrim who live on flats or platforms built on the branches of mallow trees. On the 15th of January, Haldir and his companions encounter the Fellowship of the Ring led by Aragorn, who, being a friend of the Lady Galadriel, had brought them to the Golden Wood. Haldir had heard of Aragorn, as he was known in Lorien, but it is not clear if they had met before. As he had learned the common speech, he was the one who welcomed them. There are some of us, still, who go abroad for the gathering of news and the watching of our enemies, and they speak the languages of other lands. I am one. Haldir is my name. My brothers, Rumil and Thorofin, speak little of your tongue. When he learns that one of the members of the Fellowship Gimli is a dwarf, he is at first reluctant to let them pass. At last, he agrees to it, but only if Gimli is blindfolded when they get deeper into the realm. Until this moment, Halder and his companions had been keeping watch of the rivers as orcs were traveling near Lothlorien outside its northern borders. Haldir then becomes the Fellowship's guide to the city of Karas Galadon, and as the night approaches, he gives them food and cloaks. Later that night, his eyes saw a shadowy figure climbing the trunk of the tree that the Fellowship is resting on. But, after she climbs through the branches to investigate, the figure vanishes. There was something in this tree that I have never seen before. It was not an orc. It fled as soon as I touched the tree stem. It seemed to be wary and to have some skill in trees. Or I might have thought that it was one of you hobbits. The creature that Haldir had seen was Gollum, who had attempted to approach Frodo Baggins in order to steal the one ring that he was carrying. A company of a hundred orcs had previously passed the Nimrodel River, and as Haldir and his brothers could not overcome them alone, they had led them deeper into Lorien with faint voices. So Haldir did not suit for he did not want to draw the orc's attention. The next day, Haldir and Rumil guide the Fellowship further southward, following the Celebrant River, and, running lightly along ropes, they travel from tree to tree 
helping the fellowship along the way. As now was the time to blindfold Gimli, the whole fellowship agrees to be blindfolded instead, and Legolas expresses his disappointment in this, as everyone in Silo Florian is the enemy of Sauron. To wit, Haldir replies, Indeed, in nothing is the power of the Dark Lord more clearly shown than in the estrangement that divides all those who still oppose him. After that, as Haldir is traveling with the Fellowship further into Lothlorien, he wonders if there are elf havens in the western part of Middle-earth, near the sea, as he had never visited them, to which Mary answers that they indeed exist, but he has never seen them as well. I have never been out of my own land before, and if I had known what the world outside was like, I don't think I should have had the heart to leave it. Not even to see Fell of Lorien, the world is indeed full of peril, and in it there are many dark places, but still there is much that is fair, and though in all lands love is now mingled with grief, it grows perhaps the greater. Some there are among us who sing that the shadow will draw back and peace shall come again, yet I do not believe that the world about us will ever again be as it was of old, or the light of the sun as it was aforetime. For the elves I fear, it will prove at best the truce in which they may pass to the sea unhindered and leave the Middle Earth forever. Alas for the Florian that I love, it would be a poor life in a land where no Malorn grew. Haldir continues to guide the Fellowship to Karas Galadon all day long until they rest in the evening. The next morning, they keep on traveling deeper into the woods, when suddenly many elves arrive. They bring news to Haldir, and he reports some of them to the Fellowship. They bring me a message from the Lord and Lady of the Galadrim. You are all to walk free, even the dwarf Gimli. It seems that the Lady knows who and what is each member of your company. He removes Gimli's bandage first and apologizes to him. Then they reach Kerry Amroth, and Haldir welcomes the guest. Behold, you are come to Kerry Amroth, for this is the heart of the ancient realm as it was long ago, and here is the Mount of Amroth, where in happier days his high house was built. Here ever bloom the winter flowers in the unfading grass the yellow Eleanor and the pale Nifredil. Here we will stay a while and come to the city of the Galadrim at dusk. After many hours of travel, they reach Karas Galadon. Welcome to Karas Galadon. Here is the city of the Galadrim, where dwell the Lord Celeborn and Galadriel, the Lady of Lorien, but we cannot enter here, for the gates do not look northward. We must go round to the south side, and the way is not short, for the city is great. When they eventually reach the gates, Haldir knocks, and with some words, the gates open soundlessly without a guard appearing at all. They pass the wall's gate and then they climb the tall mallon tree of the Lord and Lady. He brings the fellowship to them and he is present when Galadriel and Celeborn greet their guests. After that, Haldir 
bids farewell to them and returns to the fences of the north, where he keeps great watch due to the tidings of Moria that the fellowship had brought. After almost a month, Haldir comes to visit the company again. I have returned from the northern fences and I am sent now to be your guide again. He leads them south until they leave Karas Galadon and they turn southeast and after approximately 10 miles of travel they reach the Anduin River. Haldir leads the fellowship to the elven boats which are ready for them. Come, all is now ready for you. Enter the boats, but take care at first. The company enters the boats and Haldir remains on the banks of the river. During the War of the Ring, Lorien is assaulted three times by Dol Guldur, the fortress of Sauron, across the Anduin River. And after these assaults, the elves of Lorien assail the fortress. Haldir may have taken part in these battles. However, we do not hear of Haldir after the Fellowship's departure. But in the appendices, we are told what becomes of Lothlorien in the end. In Lorien, there lingered sadly only a few of its former people, and there was no longer light or song in Karas Galadon. After the reign of King Elessar and the death of Arwen Undomiel, no elf walked in the land of Lorien, so Haldir's fate is unknown. He may have passed west of the Misty Mountains and beyond Belegair, the Great Sea, to the Undying Lands, but this is only speculation, as of that tale Tolkien does not speak. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one on Maegovanen. Namarie.